Hey guys, this is Infinite Flash here. Today I'm going to be talking about what happened in, in round seven in today's Sync Field Cup between Fabiano Caruana and Maxime Bashir Lagrave. In this game, with Fabiano playing black Car uh, and Lagrave playing white, Caruana is in an incredible streak up with the six out of six score. Maxime is having a bit of a down tournament, but of course the, all the attention is on Caruana and if he can keep up the streak of just keep on winning, winning, winning. And he's beaten basically everybody. And let's see what he could do in this game. The game started out with d4, and Caruana played a Queen's Gambit where we get a Queen's Gambit decline. And usually, um, these days, one of the modern main lines is bishop e7. And you know, one of the ideas is that if knight f6, um, this kind of allows the capture over here and bishop e5 to be played. Uh, you know, I've, this is not such a great idea for for white, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, in this position, instead of uh, instead of that, instead of knight f6, I mean, he played bishop e7, very, very solid stuff. And white just continued with developing here with bishop f4. And both sides are primarily focused about the development in this position. We quickly got a pretty normal looking position with rook c1, trying to bury some, up, some uh, pressure down the up c file. I mean, um, black continued with knight bd7, solidly developing. And now uh, white decided to, let's say, close the position, c5. One idea is that b4 is, you know, you know, c5 is just kind of, let's say, uh, expanding, kind of preparing this queenside expansion, I mean. And he, basically before he has to do this, I, he just wanted to close the center, so there's nothing happening on the c4 pawn where, you, you know, white, black might have this a6 and b5 idea, and bishop b7 solving in the light square bishop. That kind of explains white's logic behind the move c5. And in the, this position, Black decided to play knight e4, planting his knight over here. And you know, in this position, I mean, this is a re really, really, really reasonable move. Um, and we'll see uh, what Caruana's idea was after this. In the game, MVL played bishop d3. If he takes the knight, creating these double pawns, the the problem with this kind of move is that White's development is not going to be normally developed. Let's. Um, I want to point out that this knight cannot go to the square like it usually wants to. So it has to go to the move such as knight e2 and then knight c3 with probably bishop e2 or bishop c4, right? But the only problem with this move is that it's running into e5, taking advantage that white put a lot, uh, kind of a lag and just kind of wasted his time and didn't really develop. And the idea with e5 is that if you take with the pawn, well then, I'm probably just capturing the capturing the pawn over here on c5, gaining access with knight d3, and this is obviously uh, very unpleasant, you know. And um, sorry about that uh, that swirly box. My connection has been really, really bad here lately. Um, after knight e2, e5, if white takes here with the bishop, then you can capture the bishop, and after pawn takes knight, you can do this queen trade with the king misplaced over here, and probably just uh, rook d8 and knight d4 with rook d5 coming. Black is doing very well since he's attacking and probably gaining back a pawn here. But that's just a sample line. Of course, um, e5 is not the only move. But, you know, black is doing quite fine. Usually, white doesn't white doesn't really want to make a move like this just yet. He wants to focus on his development over here. And this kind of explains MVL's next move. Bishop d3, attacking the knight, putting more pressure, and, you know, black could have certainly taken here on c3 and, let's say, um, just, uh, you know, reduce the pressure, but Caruana wanted to keep as many pieces on the board, so he played the very, very interesting move f5, going for a stonewall dutch position. And, you know, it's pretty weird actually. White's kind of already committed to this early c5 pawn uh, push, and this kind of closed the position. And ordinarily, I think stonewall players, especially um, from my experience, since I've played the stonewall myself quite a number of times, uh, I wouldn't, I really like whenever pushes, white pushes c5 in these kind of structures, and doesn't have the ideas of, uh, you know, when the pawn is over here. There's more attacking potential. There's more attacking potential if the pawn is here on c4. And I think one idea if the pawn was on c4 is that white could probably go for knight f3, knight e, knight e5, and some probably, probably some direct, you know, attack with the pawn going to g4, trying to mess up the whole kind of uh, solid setup for black. But with the pawn on c5, you have to play really positionally. And white played with knight f3 and Clearly, um, this is more of the slow kind of maneuvering kind of game. And, you know, in the game, Caruana decided to play uh, c6, you know, stopping all c6 threats by white, kind of closing down the position. 
going for a typical Stonewall Dutch. This is very, very solid. In this position, black could also play the crazy looking g5 move, gaining a tempo on this bishop. And, you know, there are a couple moves that white has. If he goes to bishop, you know, goes to e5 and, you know, kind of says, you know, this is, bishop is a really, in a really nice place, um, black can really transform the position to, into his favor. He can take this knight here, and the idea behind this is if white recaptures here, then you can play g4 to move this knight away from the bishop, the bishop's defense, which, you know, the knight really wants to go to the square, and this bishop's not in the proper spot. I wish it was back on g3, so, you know, the knight could have gone here in this position. And after the knight moves here, white doesn't really have any better moves. Um, notice that the h4 and g5 squares are covered by the bishop and the queen. So in a move like knight g1 is pretty much embarrassing. So he has to go to knight d2, but now black just captures here, the bishop here, and white is forced to recapture here. Black would probably play b6, forcing this pawn to move, as, you know, if you play a move like b4, you're very, very happy with the opening of the b file here. This is very, very pleasant for black, probably rook b8, and black is clearly better in this kind of position. Um, notice that black, white is always left with this weak c5 pawn in that position. Probably white would be forced to push here, the pawn here, and after this I think black would play d4, make the position go kaboom, and well, bishop b4. I mean, this, this, the whole position looks very, very bad for black, uh, very bad for white, I think. Um, notice that you can't play rook c4 probably because of queen takes b2. So, well, the whole position's not good for white. So white can't play bishop b5, but he can also play bishop g3, and this leads to kind of crazy positions in that black can play f4 here and win a piece even. This is kind of a piece sacrifice by white. But the problem is for both sides is that the complications after knight takes e4, pawn takes knight, bishop takes knight, uh, bishop takes pawn, I mean, pawn takes bishop, is that even though black is up a piece in this position, h7 is attacked. Black has two two uh, extra pawns that are denoted by the the missing pawns here in the f file and the d file. White has a really really nice diagonal as noted. Black is you kind of play g5, which is a bit insane if the pawn was uh, on g7. If the pawn was on g here uh, on uh, g8 g7, I mean, and it, I think uh, black would probably be winning in this position with the move such as. Uh, I think g6, and well, black doesn't really have any problems then. But now, uh, you know, with a move like g5, you weakened yourself, and I mean, h7 is hanging, so you got to address that with probably with rook f7, and queen c2 attacks that uh, pawn again, and if you play, and if you uh, play after queen c2, knight f6, well, this bishop has to move, or even white can play knight, knight e5 and have pretty, pretty interesting compensation in any case with either bishop d3 or knight e5. You can look at that in more depth. That's not really part of the game. I want to focus on the game more. This was certainly interesting for Black if he considered g5. I think Carol wanted one something very solid, so he played c6 in typical Stonewall Dutch fashion with a locked center here. And after this, um, I think uh, MBL played this a little bit weird. Oh, well, he started with knight e5, which is fine, but the problem is uh, Black can just capture this and. Okay, you can't take with the pawn because the bishop takes c5, so you got to take with the bishop. And after this, black plays a pretty nice um, bishop f6. Black could also play b6, trying to force the this pawn to, let's say, take over here. And after a takes, that's a really nice a file. And if you play a move like b4, I think uh, black would be very, very happy to open the b file anyway. And well, maybe the bishop's here, but you can play bishop f6, try to kick it, trying to trade off this bishop anyway. Um, that's just one idea. Not really relevant but to the game, but kind of an idea you want to keep in mind. So he played bishop f6, kind of forcing this white bishop to react. And the problem is white is actually forced to essentially just take here. Um, you can't really afford to play a move such as castles because probably black would just take here. And, well, the problem is uh, you can't take here because of this pawn hanging. And, well, that's just dropping a pawn flat out. Um, even so, this pawn is really weak, even if white, you know, somehow regains it. Re it somehow gets his, even if black decides not to take it, this is still a weak pawn. This is still a weak pawn, and the structure is not that great for, uh, not that great for white. And if you play a move like f4, trying to, f4, trying to, like, you know, support this bishop, 
clock is just going to take here. And no matter which way you recapture, maybe probably just F takes, um, Queenish 4 comes and, well, this is very, very bad for, uh, very bad for white as g3 is met by knight takes g3. So, well, that's not good for white. So he's forced to take and white, black recaptured with the queen. Very, 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 very okay for him. And, you know, after this, I think, um, I think, uh, white played knight e2. He wants to reroute this knight and black wanted to exchange this and play e5. But in the game, in this position, black plays e5 anyway. And, you know, a move like knight e2 is kind of designed to maybe facilitate this queenside pawn push. What's strange about this game is that white refuses to castle in these kind of positions, and he probably should castle to get his king just out of the center. This is just, you're kind of feeling a little bit weird about the king always stuck in the center with this rook out of play. Um, and this becomes kind of a major theme, as we'll see. White played knight e2, black played e5, the freeing break, trying to play, get his bishop out here, and you can kind of see f4 coming in this position, and the center is about to open up, and white has to play pretty precisely. In the game, MBO played the pretty really strange move, queen a4, and his idea is that if black took here, he could take with the queen, and, you know, the queen is pretty nicely placed on d4, but black would probably not just take, black decided not to take here in the game. Uh, he could also just castle, as mentioned, and get his king to safety, you know, and um, I think this position is... You know, very fine for black. Uh, this is probably the best option for white, but the problem is after queen a4 has played in the game, um, I think uh, white is landing in some hot water after um, if uh, Caruana played uh, queen g6, kind of attacking g3, and maybe, um, you know, if you play g3, this is a bit kind of like ugly looking as, you know, knight g5 is taking advantage of the f3 square, and that's very, very ugly. Just, I, oh, just, uh, it's kind of, Looking at and trying to eat spinach. Um, you know, you can't really play g3, and you can't really castle, I suppose. Maybe you just have to capture this knight here and try to get this try to get this superior piece off the board, and black would capture with the f pawn. Threaten g2 still, and after castles, I really think that um, probably just bishop g4 attacking this knight forces him maybe a rook move to defend it, and I don't know, maybe a rook here, and well, black has the structural advantage with the space over here. Has the F file here, has the potential to maybe muster up some kind of attack over here if he chooses not to take the knight immediately. But he can also just take here and probably play the interesting with b5 and freeze up this game with the idea that if pawn takes here, pawn takes here, the queen is laterally defending this and black opens the a file. Clearly, black is better in any case. Um, you know, going back. Um, it's very, really difficult to recommend anything. Castles is, I mean, not very nice, but maybe the best option is, I guess, um, um, you know, maybe black just plays f4 in this position and tries to break the whole thing open. Notice that white cannot win a piece here with f3 because black would have knight c5 forking the queen and the bishop here in this position, and black actually gains the material. And if you can't play f3, this position looks really, really bad for white. Well, I think MBL just didn't want to castle and because of this, he was just afraid of f4. Very, very understandable. And, well, this Caruana didn't play queen g6, but that, those were the kind of ideas that he has to reckon with. And I guess he kind of got, in thought, got it in his thoughts that these threats are still available after queen h4. And, you know, it's about, it's kind of, he's in kind of an emergency right now where he needs to castle in this position. You know, and after this, um, probably uh, play. He was kind of afraid that Black would play knight, G, knight of six, followed by um, knight g4. Notice that Black, White cannot take this pawn still because of this queen right hanging over there. And after knight f6, um, I guess Envio was afraid of this, but maybe this was better than the alternate. Then maybe the alternative is better than uh, maybe this as an alternative was better than the game continuation. In the game. He played g3, attacking the queen, but the problem is this pawn move left behind very, very serious weaknesses on the white squares. And black played queen g4, threatening queen f3, followed by queen f2, and that's very, very difficult to prevent. White chose rook f1 to kind of defend against, you know, this queen f3 idea. So he kind of defends against that threat, but it's 
very, very ugly, let's say. White can also play knight g1, but again, this looks abysmal as black plays f4 and smashes through the whole structure. Notice that white's actually not winning a piece due with f3 new, due to this kind of cool tactical line with queen g5, pawn takes knight, pawn takes here, threatening g2, and if you decide to recapture, black would take here, fork the rook, fork the bishop, and you know, white is really in hot doo doo. So black white's position is a complete mess, um, an utter disaster really, after knight g1, rook f1 was played. And after this, I think um, Black decided to move the, let's say, move the knight back to go to f3. And um, well, knight f3 check is threatened, and the king is not very well placed to meet that. So in the in this position, White could play f knight g1, and but the problem is Black would just smash through with f f4, and well, I mean, this position is not nice looking. This is probably the best continuation what I'm about to put up. I think um, probably just pawn takes pawn. And this queen trade is probably the what you would say salvation for for white in retrospect uh, compared to the game. But still, uh, this pawn structure looks awful. You can see white just black scooping up this. The queen side, this, these pieces are nice looking, and a move like rook g2 is actually not winning a piece because black has h5, and a move like h3 can be just taken by the knight, and black is not losing a piece on, along the g file. So if white doesn't even have that, then this position is very, very bad. Maybe that was the safest option, but the problem is Embiel kind of went, I don't know, I mean, he, he thought he could find safety here on the king's, on the queen side here with the closed center, so he decided to play king d2 and basically give up a pawn with knight f3 check. And I know this looks kind of crazy, right? The king is just marching up the board and Caruana just took the pawn. Um, he can also, instead of knight f3 check, by the way, could have played f4, trying to break open the structure. But what he played with knight f3 is certainly reasonable as well. King c3, knight takes. Rook h1 to gain tempo on this knight, and knight f3 is pretty much very good for black, if not winning for black, as he has an extra pawn and a very, very good position to go along with it. In this position, you know, white still can't take here because of this long range pin. So he decided to move the queen probably and threaten this in some way to try and open the position so he can plant his knight on d4. And in this position, like played queen g5, probably rewriting the queen over here to help support the the center over here, try to break down the structure. I guess white was in kind of a desperation zone. And by the way, I should mention MBO was in time trouble in this guy, at this point. I mean, he's been playing on, he's only had like five minutes for the... Uh, for like 20 moves left until you reach time control and well after pawn takes pawn this helps kind of this helps black to improve his position I mean so he played queen e7 threatening and kind of keeping an eye on the c5 pawn attacking the e5 pawn and white got his knight d4 move in but black gets knight takes e5 in and well this is not good for not good for white and um I think I wonder what happened. Oh, never mind. The f5 is not hanging. Sorry, guys. Um, so white played b3, you know, kind of keeping an eye on probably the c4 square at some point. And, you know, this is just kind of one more pawn move to create more shelter around the white king. Also, I mean, MBO was just trying to make move 40, so it's kind of understandable you would see silent moves like b3 just being played, little moves like that, trying to wait for Caruana to move and try to react to his move. So Caruana also had, like, a huge time advantage in this position, so he found the most accurate moves and really deserved to win this game. And after b3, he played the really, really strong and superb move b6 with the idea of this pawn sacrifice. And if black, since white took the pawn, his idea was that the c5 pawn would be pushed to gain a tempo on this knight, and now this knight has to move. Knight b5. Black continues with the strong bishop b7, continuing developing with you know this idea of d4 check, threatening the king checking the king and attacking the rook over here and essentially opening up the whole position. White obviously cannot allow a takes b in this position, so he decided to take the pawn here, temporarily closing the position. But white black still played d4 check. And, you know, there's not really a way to prevent this anyway. And if you allowed, um, let's see if you, let's see if you try to prevent this by moving the king. Well, 
A takes B is a complete disaster anyway. So he just chose to take the pawn and um, put white put all of his bets on to the, the pawns that he's about to get. White played D4, takes, knight takes bishop, and after king takes bishop, white took the rook in the corner. And, you know, black is up a rook, but he still has to show some technique with all these pieces amassed on the queen side and white finding maybe some hopeful shelter in this kind of position. Black continued with queen, queen e4 check, the king came up the board, queen e2 check, king b4. White is again placing all of his bets onto this compact structure, um, although it's not that compact really, but queen d2 check. And you know, white really doesn't want a queen trade in this position. After all, he's down a rook and black can try to create a passer if he's bored on the h file and try to push that to victory. Although he still has to watch out for the a pawn, so you know, in the end, uh, I don't think MVL wanted a queen trade either, so he decided on rook c3. But the problem with this move is that Caruana finds the excellent bishop c6, threatening to take this knight, followed by queen takes d4. And white really doesn't have a defense against that, so he allowed it. Played a4, bishop takes here, king takes bishop. Queen takes d4, and well, white is collapsing. He played rook c7, playing on for a little bit longer, but after rook fd8, we can see rook d5 coming. The king is very, very close to getting mated. MVL played queen b6, and after rook d5, well, this king is forced over here, and I think Caruana played rook d6 and threatens the queen, and you cannot play rook c6 because of, um, I think, um, Probably just rook takes, and there's the a7 pawn hanging with two attackers there, and white would not be doing well as he's probably getting mated in that, in that position. So he can't play rook c6, and he just played a5, banking the, on the fact that um, after rook takes b6, a takes b6, this would be somehow playable. But I think um, in this structure, black would. Um... Sorry about that, guys, uh, that's a bit of a glitch. Um, the structure is very, very fine for very fine for white uh, for black as you can probably give this intermediate check here on d3, trying to pick up the d7 b3 pawn and if king b7, queen d5, protecting the rook over here, black wins as king a6 is met by queen takes b3 when b7 doesn't actually work because queen a3 threatens the pawn over here and black wins that position. And white black cannot white cannot interpose here because of rook c8. And if king takes well queen here, followed by queen takes b6, and white loses. So instead of um, so we played a5, and Caruana kind of went for this the, in the other way around. Played queen d3 check, king b7, queen d5, and Maxime MVL just resigned in this position. As I think he just finally saw that after king a6, rook takes here, a takes here, we get the same position on the board as I just showed you, and white has no counterplay. One thing I have to also mention is that if rook b7 happens in this position, trying to play rook b8, uh, this is actually pretty dangerous for white, as, you know, if he gets this in, he could even try to, you know, survive with these two pawns even, but even that's a bit of a pipe dream, but black has queen a4 checkmate, and this is kind of an embarrassing self-mate. Kind of weird. But anyways, guys, uh, kind of a cool king hunt there that, you know, after um, MBL just refused to castle in this position, you know, in this kind of position, and, well, it's just very, very difficult to say why he didn't, he should have just castled over here and been quite fine, but just chose to avoid it, and he got he got really caught after queen a4, which was wasting time, queen h4 to Put, put on the pressure here on the queen, king side, and MBL was intimidated, couldn't castle. So, you know, this kind of position arise, but the F3 square is pretty much a doomsday time bomb for him. And Caruana just absolutely, you know, just fed on his bones here, like a turkey he is, like the turkey he was. And, you know, from here is just a mop-up job with the king over here, and, you know, Black's, uh, Black's position is pretty much hopeless. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching. Caruana continues his amazing streak of uh, 7 out of 7 now. The guy is just on fire. 
just an amazing performance. I'll continue all those games from his perspective of the board from now on uh, for this tournament. Hope you liked the video. This is Infinite Flash signing out.